Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in to the channel. Welcome. Uh, so in our last episode, we dealt with a, a side project. Now as I mentioned, or I have mentioned in the past, I've got multiple projects. I've got ADHD and so I'll focus on one, focus on another, focus on another, and kind of bounce around between different stages of projects. And I've got quite a few car projects going at the moment as well as some costume and prop projects going as well. So uh, the videos may vary between those. Today uh, we are going to get back to the Corrado project with a uh, cosmetic fix. Now anybody who's had a Corrado for a while knows that the fog light lenses were not properly tempered from the factory and they were very prone to cracking either due to heat or due to impact from rocks and chips, things hitting them like that. A number of years ago, someone figured out that Rally Fog Lights, which is a simple aftermarket brand that people throw on dune buggies and trucks, had the exact same size lens as the Corrado, and they started a modification process where you remove the, the old broken Corrado Fog Light lens and uh, siliconed the um, rally lens in its place and I did that a number of years ago and they lasted for a pretty long time but they are indeed cracked now whether it's from heat or impact I could not say but they're cracked they're ready to be replaced and thankfully VX tuning uh, has produced the later facelift model Corrado fog light lenses in properly tempered glass and uh, following the original factory mold so it's an exact fit replacement for your broken fog lights now uh, they do sell laminex uh, protective covers to go on them i have that laminex i am planning to put it on because i don't trust anything glass on the front of my car without laminex i've got it on my r32 with the glass lenses i've got it on the corrado on the eco lenses they are super helpful so highly recommend laminex if you happen to buy these fog light lenses from VX Tuning, you can order the properly sized Laminex appliques at the same time, and it's well worth the extra investment. Um, for you G60 owners, or if you're across the pond, early uh, model year Corrados from 89 to 92 pre facelift, I am sorry to say that they have not yet made replacement lenses for those. Uh, early cars. This is only for the, the facelift cars, the later generation. But I'm going to walk you through how to replace them. Uh, I will say that I'm skipping a few steps because I do have the front end of the Corrado taken apart at the moment so that I can put in the new AC condenser once that is finished getting uh, custom made for me. Um, so I've got the whole front end apart. I already had taken the fog light housings off. If you watched that video you know how to take those fog light housings off. So I've got them off the car, I've got them on my workbench, and I'm gonna go through the process of removing the rally lenses and putting on the VX tuning replacement lenses. I'm also gonna say this, if you are dealing with stock lenses, the procedure of taking them off is a little bit different, not horribly different. If you've got the original lenses on there and they're cracked and they're broken, um, you can use a heat gun to heat them up. Now, I would highly recommend using gloves that are heat resistant. So if you've got welding gloves, they work really well for this. If you don't, um, just be careful, not burn your fingers because the glass holds heat really, really well and you can burn your fingertips very easily. But there is a, uh, an adhesive bond that holds the factory lenses in place and you're gonna wanna heat them up a little bit and then be able to pry them off as gently and slowly as you can and that will bring the whole thing off in one piece. If yours just completely start to chip and crack during the process, um, the other there's a couple of other approaches. You can always just take a hammer to it and smash it and then when this, there's just little bits left around the, the ring of uh, leftovers, you can just chip them out with a utility knife uh, and or cut them out with a utility knife, and that's that's fine. You do run the risk of damaging the reflectors if you're being violent like that. So I don't recommend that process. So if you are finding that you're having a hard time getting your lens to come off using heat, just be patient. 
Patience is the virtue here. You, you want to take a, uh, a metal uh, chisel. Works really well to just gently wedge the glass up while you are prying on it and the, the heat will release the adhesive. It'll eventually come off. If your lenses do crack and start to fall apart while you're working on it, don't take the hammer method. Um, just be patient. Keep using heat. Use the chisel. Use a utility knife. Just take it bit by bit and you'll eventually be able to pry all that stuff out. Um, now since I'm past that process, I had already replaced my factory lenses with the Rally lenses. Um, it should be a little easier for me. I used marine quality clear silicone to seal my lenses in place. And that stuff does give a really good bond. It's not particularly uh, heat affected. So using a heat gun on it isn't going to do a whole lot for me. All I really need to do though is just get in there with a something to pry it up very gently and then slowly cut it with a utility knife at the seam and eventually it'll peel out of place and I'll be able to peel out the little bits of clear silicon that we're securing it and holding it in place. And then it's just a simple matter of laying a new bead of the clear silicone and popping the new lenses in place. I'll test fit it first, of course, just to make sure, but I'm gonna walk you through that process. So let's go over to the workbench and get to it. All right, so here I have my left-hand side fog light assembly. The replacement lens is inside here. I'm just gonna keep that off to the side for right now. And what I'm concerned with at the moment is the silicone bead that is right in here holding the old lens in place. Again, um, this stuff isn't really very heat reactive like the original factory sealant, which is kind of a double-aged sword here. Um, so I'm just gonna cut into it with a utility blade and just start separating down here. I've already got complete penetration on this side. And once I have that, this whole lens should come off fairly easily with just a little bit of persuasion from any, anything that's going to wedge it really. Um, really what I want to do is come along the upper edge here and the lower edge and, and get some bite in there to lift it out. And uh, patience really is the key for this. You, you don't want to brute force it. going to very gently convince this silicone to let me get some buy in there right along the edge. Now again I may need to do some more passes with the, uh, the knife to make sure that it's really it's a very clear release. And again, be patient with this. This is 
not something you absolutely have to rush. Oh, yeah, see how this, this is all cracked. I've got Laminex on it. This is, uh, I had protected it with Laminex previously. And the Laminex is helping me right now by keeping all of this glass together as I pry it and lift it free. And I'm going to work my way down the edge here, trying to be careful not to wreck the reflector. see looking down inside there where the crack has separated this part of the lens from another part that's farther back in there so I'm going to try to get my chisel in there to uh, have more release but I may have to edges so gloves <laughs> use gloves be careful you don't want one of these sharp edges to to nick you right now is not the time you want to be going to an emergency room with all these COVID infected people is removed. Now I've got a little bit of cleanup work to do here, the old silicone, in order for the new lens to sit properly. So I'm just going to take some scraping tools and the knife and just get rid of the silicone and, and get that as cleaned up as I can and then I'll do a test fit with the, uh, the replacement lens. Some the residue, some of the debris has gotten on the reflector. Do not touch it. Get compressed air and just blow it out of there and that'll be way better than messing with it. Uh, just blow all the debris out. Now, before I get there, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and test fit uh, the... No, I will blow it out first and then I'll test fit the new lens. Alright. Again, eye protection. Stuff's going to fly around, but just... That's it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and test fit the new lens just to see how it looks. Now, here's the new lens. You see that VXT has molded their initials down into the corner. There aren't any other markings on them. So, 
If you live in a country where they look to see the official safety markings, they might not give you a pass on this. Just FYI. But Test fit. Oh, that is beautiful. So I don't need to do any more cleaning of the silicone, really, and it's ready to, to go in place. So to that end, I am going to clean off my desktop here, my workspace, and make a little bit more room before I get the uh, sealant and we deal with that. Just move this off to the side because I do have one more lens I will have to deal with after this. But what do you think? Should I put this on the wall of shame or toss it? Yeah, I don't think this is wall of shame worthy. I think this just needs to go. Um, but yeah, it's it served its purpose for a long time, so thank you, Rally Fog Light. So, to secure this lens, we are going to be using you really could use any marine quality silicone. It's, it's watertight is what you want to aim for. So um, aquarium silicone works just fine. It's, it's heat resistant enough. I'm going to be using, this is Accuform Plastics Silaseal. It's a clear silicone. It's, uh, it's got some good heat resistance to it. Uh, it's the same stuff that I used before. And it doesn't need a ton of this stuff. So I'm going to lay it right on the lens itself. Just a very small bead and press it into place and that should be enough i don't want like overwhelming amounts of this stuff spilling out so just enough to make a decent seal and that's it got kind of a mix of the original um, white uh, silicon sealant factory stuff as well as this um, clear stuff that I've got from so it's not going to be like absolute showroom perfect but man um, it's going to pass the one foot test that's for sure nobody is unless they're looking for concord level of perfection they're, they're not gonna no sense. Anyway, just gonna wipe up any residue from the silicon from my gloves make sure I don't have any smears on this and my next step is I'm gonna put the 
Laminex on there. Now, Laminex comes pre-cut for every car. So with this one, I've got uh, the leftovers from my E-Code kit, and that'll just fit on beautifully right there. I don't think there is a big difference between... Oh yeah, there is. There's curves match. All right, so this should be fairly straightforward because I have not, um, I don't have any dust or debris or anything in there. So uh, a spudger tool is helpful for getting any bubbles out of there. I know there's a lot of different ways to go about this. Um, some people spray water on there, slide it around, and then and then um, you know manipulate it so the water is gone. If I were not starting with a brand new lens, I would probably take that approach. As it is, I think I can get away with just putting it straight on there as if I was putting on a uh, protective screen for a phone. So I do want a spudger to be able to um, gently convince any bubbles to go away. I'm going to go grab one of those from my computer. Oh, here we go. This will do. Just a plastic spudger. That'll work. All right. So they provide these little tabs on the outside for you to grab from so that you don't touch any of the adhesive surface on the actual lens assembly. And be real careful to do that because the adhesive is not really forgiving for any sort of oil or uh, contamination, which I've just gotten on here. Uh, oh, no, and it's lifting my lens off of that. Uh, okay, so note to self, maybe you want to wait for the silicone to cure before doing that. Part of the procedure but I already have this off of the adhesive so I'm going to go for it and I, I may need to add a little bit more silicone based on the seal that it felt like it came off really really easily now this silicone takes a long time to cure it is not a quick cure you're done five minutes it is 24 hour and then it's done sure that if you were to go to a vinyl place where they do wraps they could install this for you so perfectly and it would be wonderful and beautiful and you just wouldn't have any any issues with it now before you bend down the edges it is important to cut these little extra tabs off at this point I, I would like to remind everyone my car is a driver yes I put it in shows yes I try to keep it looking really good but at the end of the day my car is going to get driven it's going to see the road it's going to see actual miles it is function first that I'm concerned with so that looks pretty good Got the Laminex on there, got the new lens on there. Is it perfect? No. Is it way better than it was? Well, let's compare. I'm gonna pull up the old one because I haven't done the other side yet. And we can compare the two. So here, here's the old lens. Here's the new lens. 
and uh, this one's actually not cracked so hopefully that'll be a lot easier to come off you can see the difference in the flute pattern um, you can see how this one's a little smaller so there's a lot more gap along the edge compared to this one that goes all the way out to the edges properly so I'm gonna have to pull this one out and then if I'm able to pull that out without breaking it I guess somebody who needs a spare rally lens well send me a message and let me know if you need it we can <laughs> work something out for our second lens what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a slightly different approach for lens number two and I'm gonna add the laminex to the lens first before I even get anywhere close to mounting it and that seems like that might serve me a little bit better in the long run so let's do that I wonder if I have some silver paint. I might want to just hit this little section. I'm not worried about the reflector. The reflector is just, it's just worn and I'm not going to improve that. But this little rusty area here, some silver paint on that would go a long way towards not having a very obvious, obvious imperfections. As it happens, I, I do have a little bit of metallic spray paint that I can put on there. That's just so bad. 
I think I'm gonna hit it <laughs> with some of this metallic paint just to get rid of that darkness there. It's, it's really, you know, this reflector is what it is. It's not gonna improve, improve or hurt the reflective properties of it. Very, very, very quick, light brush coat. Well, not brush, but just sort of one pass on either side, and it's looking way better. So, um, you know, again, this is not gonna improve the reflective ability of my lens, if anything, probably hurt it, but it looks better. Uh, so, this is fine. And uh, just goes to show you that sometimes the thing that you need to do is the thing that you normally should not do. Anyway, we're gonna proceed on to laying the lens in there. So I'm going to get some silicone in place on our lens. I'm going to get myself a paper towel here to wipe off any excess as we're working on it. Here we go. We've got the lens with Laminex on it and oops, a couple of bubbles in there that I did not quite catch with the spudger. Uh, a, a nice thing about Laminex is it actually breathes a bit. So sometimes if you get a bubble in it, uh, especially right out here in the middle, don't worry about it too much. As the sun hits it, as it warms up, a lot of them are going to go away. subscribers had asked um, why I didn't have more dogs in the videos. Uh, <laughs> some of my recent ones have not had dog content and I apologize for that. It has been over 100 degrees outside and the dogs are much happier indoors in the cool air conditioning uh, rather than being outside with me at the moment. Oh, that feels like a really good, firm fit. Okay, so again, like the other one, we're gonna go ahead and let it sit for at least 24 hours to cure before we reinstall it on the car. Not a problem, because I don't anticipate putting the car back together until next week, but this is good. I'm happy with this. All right, so we've got the new VX tuning lenses siliconed onto the fog light housings for my Corrado, and those are gonna be sitting overnight to cure. Very happy with how that's come along so far. Um, uh, hopefully, if you've watched this, I hope you watch it all the way through to learn a couple of lessons before, quiet R2, before you do this yourself. Uh, so definitely the second method that I took, adding the Laminex to the lens first before you tr put it in the housing and then monkey with it while the silicone is not cured and it can still slide around. That wasn't a great way to go. So the second way, put the Laminex on the lens first and then silicone it in place. Much better. Um, I hope that that helps out some of you. And uh, we'll, we'll come back to this. Those are going to dry overnight. In the meantime, we do have one more Laminex project 
that we are going to get to this week. I already have Laminex headlight protectors on the glass lenses of my Mark IV R32. Now they have to be replaced about every five years. Some people replace them more frequently than that, but over time, just like regular polycarbonate lenses, they do start to cloud and they do, they haze up and they start to, these ones don't really yellow, but they, they do get more cloudy and, and they lose their optical clarity. So I've got a brand new set of Laminex covers uh, to go on to replace the old worn out ones. And we're gonna go through the steps of removing Laminex if you do need to do that. And it's pretty much you heat it up and then it peels off, but you do need to clean it a particular way before you put on the new stuff. And then we'll go ahead and apply the new Laminex to the headlight lenses. Um, I will be using the water method, spraying water on it so that we can get all the bubbles out of it and have a perfect adhesion by the time we're all said and done. But I am not going to do that right this moment. So I'll come back to you in the next video with the Mark IV R32 headlight lens Laminex installation. God bless. Hope you are enjoying the content. If you've got some stuff you'd like to see, like the people that requested more dog content, leave a, leave a message, leave a comment. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and I hope you are having great success on your projects during this corona crisis or whenever you happen to watch this video. See ya.